Good morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors. The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster. Hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to season three and episode number 318 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. Yeah. Today, recording day is Thursday, February 15th, post Valentine's Day, or Valentine's Day continued if every day is Valentine's Day for you and your love. I also saw somebody post something that said Palestine's Day. Oops. Yeah, I I, I guess it works. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah exactly. a little touchy subject <laughs> at this time of year, uh, especially when we're talking about love because there doesn't seem to be much of it going on there. Anyway, uh, yeah, so if uh, Valentine's Day is continuing, because I've seen a lot of posts like that yesterday. I'm not doing anything special particularly today. We've been married 31 years, and every day is Valentine's Day for us. So, good for you. I am. Um, you know, if that's the way you see it. I have a particular hate on for that day. Oh, you do? <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, see, I don't. I'm all about the love. Oh, no, I'm always all about the love, but I don't... Oh, I know you are. Uh, ...dictated by a date on a calendar is what I'm getting at. It's like the amount of pressure on men in relationships to make sure they go way out of their way to do something super special on a day, on, on a specific day, dictated by a greeting card company. That's my take on it. Um, I, I, I tell my, my lovely partner that I love her every day. I try and treat her special every day. Why does it have to be one specific day of the year? I just, I hate it. <laughs> I don't look at it that way. I look at it as a, you know, every now and then we need to be reminded. It's sort of like that Lisa Stansfield song, Old, Old Woman. That was a big hit every now and then, you know, mm -hmm. uh, every now and then back then, you know, she's basically, you know, her man's not been paying that much attention to her all of a sudden. I mean, she just reminds him, hey, 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 I may not be a lady, but I'm old woman. You know, like this, and then he realizes, oh, gee, yeah, I've been kind of taking you for granted. So, you know, a day on the calendar that says, you know, just uh, you know, remember not to take the people you love for granted. And uh, mm. you know, I guess, you know, you don't have to be. I'm definitely not bound by the, the things of, you know, having to do it on a specific date. But my sweetie and I do celebrate it. Because for us, it's going to be on this weekend because... He has marking and a class to prepare for today. <laughs> and I, guess I understand. I was up it. late. I understand but, it means a lot of things to a lot of people. Oh yeah, I, I know that it's important to a lot of people. It just, I, I just don't see it that way. Yeah, for Pete, I don't. I have, I have no problem with it myself. But yes, the whole sort of like you must do it on that day, and you must do like something absolutely extraordinary, or else you know, you're not, you're not really in love. Like none of that kind of stuff. But sort of like you know, hey. Life gets busy sometimes, and 
you know, like right now, both of us are in a very, very, very busy period. It would be easy for us to just like pass by each other. Hi, hi. And sorry, got to go to work, got to go to work, got to do stuff. And, you know, no, I understand. each other like 10 minutes a day. It's like, you know, let's, let's, let's take a moment. I understand. Yeah. Yes. But then I again, mean, we, I just, Bridget came over last night and we had a lovely dinner and uh, we went, uh, went and saw the fellows for Scotch and Cigar Night for a short little visit. And uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Had a nice time. And and for me, Valentine's Day is not just about romantic love. It's all the ways that love manifests in your life. So mm -hmm. hopefully for everyone, they got all the kinds of love. They got the friendship love and they got the romantic love and they got the, if you have children, parental love and child love and, you know, just all the love. Because all love is good. Self-love. Yeah. yeah. Right? Not everybody has anybody at this moment, but uh, there's a difference between not having anybody because you're taking time to choose yourself and right you don't have to be lonely because you're alone i just like i just like valentine's day i love Valentine's. <laughs> james you and i are simpatico <laughs> <laughs> nothing says love like conforming to a rigid date on a calendar invented by corporate interests also i am broken <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I feel you, bro. <laughs> Plus, I love Valentine's Day. It's an excuse to wear my I will cuddle you so hard t shirt. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> All right, kids and cubs. Uh, I'm your host, the eager beaver pronouns he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver A. And with me, as always, is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. A big thank you goes to our podcast founding sponsors, the Pepper Master, the Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing. Let's try that again Corvid Moon Publishing, Canadian mm -hmm. Tarot. Um, it's going to be a beautiful day here at the Beaver Lodge, but it's going to be a cold one. I see that in the chat. A lot of people going, it's cold. Yeah, we went from, from plus 7 to minus 17 in 48 hours. Yeah. That's quite a swing. Yeah, it's uh, minus 13 feels like minus 18 right now here in the nation's capital. Yep. So th th that's a bit of a swing. Yeah. Uh, I have to admit, I'm, I'm not a big fan of swings that way. It's going to be sunny all day, though. Yes. So you know what? The swing is difficult. It is. Yes. Unquestionably difficult because we're not used to it. No. I mean, it was nine degrees here on Friday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a big drop. That being said, a few Friday. days of sunshine, I'll take it. I yep. will take it. We haven't had nearly enough. My goodness. Mm. January and December and January, we had six days in total in a two-month period of, of mm -hmm. sunshine. I mean, sure, the sun is shining every day, but when it's overcast for two months and barely ever snows. Yeah. Yeah. But it's it's like I said, it's it's you know, I said it on the fifth and I'm still saying it today. It's like it's the fifteenth. It's like we're already halfway through the month. Yeah. Yeah. January just seemed to like drag. Ugh, yeah. Like crazy. We've had yeah, more sun in February than we had in December and January combined. Yeah. And it's just 15 days. So yeah, a little bit of sun goes a long way. Oh, yeah. yeah I have to say that for sure. All right. Uh, in the news, uh, if you read the show description, uh, well, the show, the show teaser, unfortunately, um, not going to yeah. dwell too long on it, um, but there was the Super Bowl parade uh, in the United States. And as with many things in the United States, when it comes to gatherings, it was marred at the end by a shooting and one person did end up losing their lives as a result of it um not going to go into the whole gun debate and all that kind of stuff today and how things are different there than they are here and all that kind of stuff but it's uh it's getting sad that we're not able to gather as we'd want to and not feel safe. And I, that's more of a phenomenon in the United States, but it is still a phenomenon in it's a phenomenon in Canada too. Cause last year, for example, when uh, pride was coming along, mm -hmm. pride committees got extra money from the federal government for additional security because there were concerns that they would be targeted in particular. Well, this year, just yesterday, or it's actually out this morning at 4 a.m., uh, CSIS has put out a warning that anti-gender movement poses a threat of extreme violence at Pride events this year and is already warning people. Mm. Great. 
that if you're going to go to pride gatherings that you might want to be careful or vigilant. Canada's intelligence, is, according to the CBC, Canada's intelligence agency is warning that extremists could inspire and encourage serious violence against the 2S LGBTQI plus community. A threat to the Canadian Security Intelligence Service says almost certainly will continue over the coming year. CSIS's comments come as provincial police policies on gender affirming surgeries and pronoun preferences are being hotly debated across the country. Quote, CSIS assesses that the violent threat posed by the anti gender movement is almost certain to continue over the coming year and that violent actors may be inspired by the University of Waterloo attack to carry out their own extreme violence against the 2S LGBTQI plus community or against other targets they view as representing the gender ideology agenda, said CSIS spokesperson Eric Balsam in an email to CBC News. And uh, we remember that uh, a former University of Waterloo student accused of unleashing on a gender studies class with a knife mm -hmm. last summer, sending an associate professor and two students to hospital now faces 11 terrorism charges. So if there's anybody out there considering it, if they find you, you will be charged under the Terrorism Act. CSIS assesses that exposure to groups and individuals espousing anti-gender extremist rhetoric could inspire and encourage serious violence against the community or against those who are viewed as supported as pro-gender identity. So basically, I, again, I don't know what's going on with articles that they're repeating quotes. The editors are missing. I've mm -hmm. seen that in two, two. This is two different paragraphs saying the exact same thing, quoting the same person. So was it written by an AI? <laughs> One has to wonder. One has to wonder. Uh, Balsam was commenting on a document drafted by the Integrated Terrorism Assessment Center, ITAC, and obtained by CBC News through an access to information request. According to the document, the center was monitoring the potential for an attack or violent assaults at pride celebrations, parades, and nightclubs across the country last summer. Sections of the document had been redacted. Trans and drag communities in Canada have been the target of several online threats and real-world intimidation tactics in recent months, says the document. As anti-rainbow, I'm going to say rainbow, narratives remain a common theme in violent rhetoric espoused by white nationalists, neo-Nazis, the freedom movement, and networks such as Diagalon and QAnon. And ITOC went on to say that those who embrace religiously motivated violent extremism in Canada continue, quote, to view members of the community as desirable targets. Yeah. So, you know, we look south when we see events like this and we think, oh, thank God we live in Canada or thank God we're better. Or, thank the... no, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. That could just as easily happen here. Just be thankful it hasn't. Yeah. Yeah. All well, right. And to that, during the occupation of Ottawa in 2022, I can tell you that there were people who reached out to me and said the weekend before the uh, disassembly, by the multiple police forces during the Emergencies Act. I know of several guys that were ready, willing, armed, and able. And I said, please don't do that. Please don't do that. I, I don't want that to happen. It, it will destroy your life and somebody else's. Please don't do that. I know many people who are ready to go down there with weaponry and do some damage. So if you think it can't happen here, it can. Remember Coots? It can happen here. Coots was preventative, but it could have been bloody. Yep. Yep. It definitely was prevented. I mean, it's not like we haven't had instances. You're right. Polytechnic, Dawson College. Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia. The guy Just that recently. Was, yeah. Uh, James Smith Cree Nation. All the multiple yeah. stabbings there. The you know, There might have been you know, combination of addiction and stuff as well. But, um, you know, the, the guy that uh, shot uh, Corporal Nathan Cirillo, mm -hmm. there was a shooting in Parliament. Yes. Fortunately, nobody got hurt there. Just Except a shooter. shooter. Thank you, Mr. Vickers, by the way. <laughs> um, you know, so it, it can it can happen here. It can happen here. 
It can't happen here. Yeah. So, you know. Uh, we have a kid here that just said, my oldest son survived a school shooting. In Belleville. Yeah. That's just two hours from here. Belleville is, well, Quinty, it's, it's a city. It's amalgamated now with Trenton. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's only about 30, maybe 50,000 people all told between the two towns. So, you know, it can happen here. Don't kid yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. That doesn't now that doesn't mean you should need to walk around feeling afraid. I'm not saying that. Please please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm saying don't don't say we're better because it can happen here and it has. We just have stricter and tighter gun control laws and getting access to a gun is a great deal more difficult legally in this country, legally. Mhm. Mm Kit Carl asks, has there been a show on Coots? Uh, we haven't done one specifically. We've just been talking it as, it, you know, mm -hmm. as the news comes out. Um, but yes, we've not had a specific thing yet uh, on that, uh, Kit Carl. Um, Sean, Sean Romanco here. I hope I pronounced your, uh, your name correctly, Sean. Hate and propaganda doesn't know borders. It's true. It's true. It's indeed true. Indeed true. Uh, lots of good chat here from the kits. Uh, I'm I'm glad that uh, everybody uh, has a sober mm -hmm. uh, point of view on it. It's very nice to, to see that. Speaking of thesis as well. And clearance? Yes. Can I get the clearance, Clarence? Yes. Uh, you may have not heard it because it may not have made the news uh, yet, but there is a private member's bill. I'm going to put that was it in the chat. Pardon? I'm putting a link to it in the chat. Okay. Um, maybe we should uh, bring it up at some point. I have it right here. Okay. Just a second. I'll put it on. I'll share it for everybody. There's a private member's bill that's been introduced. Bill C-377. Yes. Yeah, I got and confused because I typed Bill C-377 in, and that was for the 41st Parliament. I didn't pay yes. attention to that. And I was, I was like... I, when somebody sent this to me, I thought it was a spoof. Yeah. It's not a spoof. It's, not a spoof. Um, it's called an Act to Amend the Parliament of Canada Act. In parenthesis, need to know. And it was presented by a CPC MP who's named Alex Ruff. And if that name rings a bell to you, it is because we've talked about him before as a member of ENSACOP. Mm -hmm. Now, the summary of this bill is that if you would read it, Mr. Grizzly. One second here. <clears throat> Let me just blow this up so I can see better because I take my glasses off for the show so we don't get any light reflected in it. This enactment amends the Parliament of Canada Act to specify that a member of the Senate or the House of Commons who applies for a secret security clearance from the government of Canada is, for the purposes of the consideration of their application, deemed to need access to the information in respect of which the application is made. Okay. Effectively, what that means is if you apply, you get it. Yes and no. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a little specific specificity here. It's, how would I put it? You have to get your security clearance mm -hmm. to be able to get the information. So that doesn't change. But what this act is doing is it changes when it comes to the need to know principle because that is determined by our security intelligence agencies. The members on ENSACOP get access to the secret information because that committee was formed for that purpose and therefore they are determined to have a need to know. Mm -hmm. What this bill does is basically say that if you have your clearance already and you're an elected official MP and you determine that you want to know, mm -hmm. your want to know qualifies as need to know. Right. That the person applying to get that national security information determines for themselves whether they need to know which essentially makes Nancy Cup moot. Yeah. 
which creates right now there's like eight people on Instacup or nine or something like that. It's a small number. It's a very restrained number. It means anybody, if they had obtained the proper security clearance, said, well, I want that piece of information. Here you go. Do they need Instacup clearance? How many? There's a reason why the number of people know. That's right. Is kept small. And that information, but, correct me if I'm wrong, is usually um, learned or it's, you don't get an email. You have no. to be in a skiff to, to I'm, see. I'm not sure code. if we have to be in a skiff here in Canada, but yes. Oh, no, we have them. Okay. Well, I'm, no, no, I know we have them. Just not, I, I, I don't know how things go down, so I don't want to make any assumptions okay. in, in the I, room. I can find um, out for you though. But, uh, but yes, it's very, very tightly controlled and eyes only. your eyes only. And what you can report back on it is very limited in the way. That's what I'd like to know is how, mm. because Skippy keeps on saying that he doesn't know, but I'm sure that the two conservative members on that NSCOP committee need to report back somehow on what they saw to let them know, yeah, we need to worry or we not. And there's a limitation, and of course. Give some, and give some information. So it's not like Skippy knows nothing. But this creates a very dangerous situation because it means so many people could have so much information that each one of them could be exactly, exactly Kitlin Dab, could be a target for foreign influ- influence. Right now, mm-hmm. the targets are very small, small number, which means they're easy to monitor as well. It also makes it such that a party leader that doesn't want to go to his clearance, for example, yeah. can then have his entire caucus be cleared getting information and then doing things such as, uh, you know, this cabinet position you want. Mm-hmm. If you do me a favor, though, yeah, tell me information I can't qualify to get. This this bill will not pass. It, it will not pass. It's no a numbers bill. No way. This is just first reading. Yeah. But um, nothing says the leader of our party is a security risk, <laughs> like one of its two members sent to the body that gets to see national security information that has the special, that I tell you the clearance and has special privileges to see that information, introducing a private member's bill that would essentially make the entire caucus of that party equivalent to ENSACOP. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And nothing says a member of ENSACOP should probably no longer be on Ansacop, like introducing a private member's bill like that. It's pretty. This uh, person sits on Ansacop and has decided that it is a good idea to table a bill saying, "Yeah, everybody should have that information just because they ask for it if they happen to get get the clearance." Yeah, that's that's not. Um... How how are you protecting? How have you just shown that you could be trusted with our national secrets if you want to make them open to absolutely everybody on demand? There's less than ten people that currently have access to this information. Now you want to just give it to anybody who asks for it? Please and again, that the leader of the party did not say, you know what? No, we're not going to put this. No, as a party, we're not going to allow this private members bill to go forward. Yeah. Because seriously, this what's is the, he hiding? This is the same thing they do with the abortion bills, right? Where mm-hmm. they say, oh, oh yeah. no, our party doesn't sponsor them, but a private member puts one out and the leader doesn't say, no, no, we want no association with this, with our party whatsoever. Sorry, mm-hmm. we're not even like submitting this to get on the order paper. They let it go through. And it was read. This should have sirens, alarm bells, and red flags going off oh, yeah. all over. All over. If I was a member of the press, I would be on this like white on rice, like a greedy kid on a smarty. I, and I've not heard a whisper of it yet. So, what? <laughs> this is not a good bill. Which party put this forward? The Conservative Party of Canada. Mm-hmm. But not as, party, party. No. not as a party, not as a party. Yeah, private members. Private members bill. Bill. Yeah, Slipping it through the back. It's a little, it's a little sneaky way of doing things. Well, I say sneaky. Uh, all parties do it. 
it's kind of a backdoor method, you know? Um, yeah, very, very, very dangerous bill. And you have to be careful because people will be pointing out to say, well, hey, they still have to get the clearance. It's not the point about people who can't get clearance. This bill does not grant information mm -hmm. to people who can't get clearance. That's not what it seeks to do, is that it seeks to make everybody who has clearance able to get that bill, and the determination of who needs to know switches from our intelligence bodies to the people making the request. The very fact that I've applied equals I need to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that That's is, not that how this shit problem. works. No, 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 no. No, you speak to anybody who works in Intel or an ex member of the military will tell you, Oh God, no, that is not, the, that's not how you do this. I'm sure my father, when I send this to him, he'll lose his mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and you know, my father was, a, was, he was not in Intel. He, he was in uh, he was jet engine specialist, right? Yeah. About jet engine theory, yeah. but he knows how it works. And that ain't how it works. Exactly. And I was talking to someone online about this to try to get some more information because the way that it's worded, you're thinking like, mm -hmm. well, what's the big deal about this bill? And that really is what it is. It's the fact that the person who says, I want to know, basically it means I want to know equals I need to know. Mm -hmm. And I asked specifically, what material difference would this make? I'm trying to figure out the angle. Because Mr. Roth sits on Ensacup and the person to whom I was speaking said the difference is that with even, even with secret, secret clearance, info is still compartmentalized by need to know. So just because you're on Ensacup and the information is deemed secret doesn't mean you get to know because there are higher levels of information. Not everything gets down to Ensacup even. Ensacup's pretty high, yeah. but they're still higher. Yeah. So not everything. Cosmic. So that information is still coming. There's there is some information that ends up that the security is, is, uh, apparatus will say, no, you don't get to see that. So it's still compartmentalized based on need to know. So this basically weakens our national security like nobody's business. And the counter argument I'm being told is they are going to frame it as the government hiding politically damaging info. When the government says, no, you can't have this. We can't move this. Well, what are you hiding then? Because they're already portraying him as corrupt and a dictator and a criminal. And mm -hmm. So this is a whole setup to just push a narrative. But the bill, if it passed, would be extremely dangerous. We would basically get kicked out of the five eyes pretty much instantly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And NATO would have a huge problem with this. Yeah, it's just, well, I mean, okay, let's, let's stick with that for a minute. And NATO's having an issue with it. Remember what Trump said recently? Yep. Absolutely. And notice how Skippy voted against the free trade act with, um, the free trade, uh, agreement with Ukraine. And now he has, now he has his party slipping in a private members bill to weaken our national security. I'm not saying that he's yeah. a compromised puppet of Putin. I'm not saying that, but I am asking the question. David Wallace would be able to tell us. Yep. Matter of fact, I, I think he's outright said it more than once if memory serves. So I'm not saying he's a puppet of Putin. Uh, Donald Trump definitely is. There's no question there. But I'm asking the question, is he a puppet of Putin? because he refuses to get his Ensecop clearance. Yeah. And for those who were not aware, because they might have been living under a rock, what Donald Trump has basically said is that any NATO members that don't pay their full dues, he would actually encourage Russia to do whatever yeah. they want to them. Exactly. Rather than defending. So he's basically saying Article 5, yeah. Yeah, throw it away. We don't care. Other nations of the world put in as much money as I want you to put in, and I'll say, hey, Russia, if you're listening. Well, and this, this is the cute one that Vim just put in the comments. Uh, 
Pierre Polyev blabbing everywhere that when he's PM, he'll contribute 2% of the GDP, except his government is the government that always cuts the military. I'm not making this up. This is historically proven to be true. Yeah, they wrap themselves up in the patriotism and whatnot, and then they cut. Cut, 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 cut. So yeah, uh, keep your ears out for this because um, if journalists are doing their job, they will pick up on this because this is, again, sirens, neon line, neon flashing lights, red flags, red alert signs. This is, this is not good. No, it's not good at all. This is not good. This this should never. There, again, right? Are there? I think we had a. a interview with someone who was talking about minders are there not any minders <laughs> to realize that this bill oh it was it was high tide hilda when she was oh, talking yes, about this, right. this are there not any minders within the party that says no we are not going to do this because we do not want to look like the party that wants to make multiply the points of information the points of leak the points of compromat the points of extortion I guess, and didn't PB to like just introduce some type of bill or something like this that there's for like mandatory minimums for the crime of extortion? Yeah. So he's like making a big deal. I'm against extortion in this, but hey, let's loosen our national security series so that everybody could be subject to extortion. It's just, uh, I swear you can't write this. You can't write this. But yes, very dangerous. Very dangerous. Very, 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 very dangerous. Speaking of other things. Same, same sort of, thing for me, PNC Bio, and all I was doing yes. was attaching the cables to the servers. Yeah, PNC Bio goes, I had to get fingerprinted, background check, etc., to work on D&D servers in the early 2000s. They were hardcore, talked to junior high friends. Yeah, it was the same thing for me. Um, I've, I've had to get just, um, police background checks, uh, security clearance, um, fingerprinted. I've had to do that several times just to work in certain wings of the government. RCMP, I've worked at RCMP, CSIS, CSEC, d and I've worked in all those places. And even though I am cleared, because I was not an employee, I always had an escort. Always. And you know what I was doing? I was installing the cabling. I wasn't even working on the electronics. I was running stuff to the electronics that weren't even plugged in. And I still had an escort mm -hmm. and, and I, w I had no access to any information like nothing these are places under construction there's <laughs> they, yep. they take it very seriously they do absolutely so much so i'll give you a for instance so much so when they decommission servers pull the hard drives out it's like okay well there's nothing in no nope, the whole thing gets shredded the hard drives get shredded after they wipe them like a thousand times. It goes through a shredder and it's turned to dust. So does the chassis that the hard drive was in. <laughs> if they want to eliminate every possible echo you can imagine. They take this very seriously. So this bill is a danger to security. It's a danger to secrecy. It is a danger to our sacred democracy. It is. It is. This is this is not the bill of someone who is a patriot. No. That way. No, it is not. Now, in other sneaky CPC news, we've been talking recently about the $40 million that went to Bell. Mm -hmm. It wasn't actually $40 million cash, but it was, you know, a regulatory. regulatory. They didn't have to pay. Yes. Regulatory changes. And that was part of a $120 million initiative, $40 million of which went to Bell. So this is really a $120 million thing. Mm -hmm. And it was an amendment that was put forward in committee by the conservatives that was voted on, approved by the conservatives, the NDP, and the Black Québécois member mm -hmm. on the committee without debate or discussion. The liberals voted against it. It went into the bill. The bill passed with the votes of the liberals the Bloc and the NDP, but not the Conservatives. So the Conservatives inserted it in the bill and then did not vote in the bill. Now Bell Canada, or Bell Media, 
mm-hmm. has determined that it is going to lay off 4,800 employees to save about $40 million, which got PP hopping mad, mm-hmm. as it should. Oh, yeah. But not for the same reasons as it got everybody else hopping mad. He decided to blame Trudeau for something. He did. His party did. His party, not him personally, but his party. And then Singh decided to get into the action. But, but so, you know what? If he's always pointing the finger and playing the blame game of everything that's bad in this world is Justin Trudeau's fault. So you know what? You own this one, Polyev. You own this. You did this. Mm-hmm. You did so, this. Liberal MP Talib Noor Mohammed, who we talked about before because he arranged that summit mm-hmm. between members of the uh, Muslim community or the Arab community and the Jewish community to try and talk a little peace, given that things are a little tense right now, and had the prime minister attend that. Um, he's the parliamentary secretary to the Heritage Committee. And the committee has decided that on February 29th, the leaders of these organizations will come in to testify for two hours. Now, when I heard this, it was like, ooh, gee, you get $40 million in relief, and then you just blow it, and your consequences that you have to come in and testify for two hours. Ooh, right? So it's not real. Now, in Canada, we don't swear the people in when they come to testify like they do in the United States. It's just assumed that you're under oath, but it is testimony under oath. Um, But you know what these things are often. They come in, you know, they spend their two hours, and then they go back to their regularly scheduled lives, and that's about where it ends for them. Well, there was a vote in the committee about holding this session, and everybody on the committee voted for it Except the conservatives who decided to abstain. They didn't even bother to to cast a ballot. They didn't vote against it. They just didn't vote. Because they thought that might get noticed too much. They just didn't vote. So, the Pierre, who got up there and made a big stink about it, for some reason does not want to hear from the executives who benefited from the largest his party inserted into the bill Mm -hmm. that he's walking away from in public. He's pretending he had nothing to do. And he certainly doesn't want to answer a question about it. We saw that yesterday. Yeah. When asked about why his party did that, oh, he attacked he attacked CP instead, and claimed that CP was a mouthpiece of the government. So you'd think that somebody who thought that Bell was the mouthpiece of the government, their bought and paid for propaganda wing with government money, would certainly want the people who are heading that propaganda wing to show up in Parliament so that his members can grill them and create some clips. But no, he abstained, lending all that much more credence to what I was saying yesterday when uh, you're looking at that graph again, Mm -hmm. of all the editorial endorsements, particularly ones, the editorial endorsements from ownership. Like, hmm. If they're supposed to be Trudeau's mouthpiece, why aren't they recommending that we vote liberal? So that $120 million that he slipped in, yeah, that seems to be more like, hey, guys, we're loving all these endorsements. Why don't you keep those going? Wink. Yeah. But hey, if they ever ask me about it, I'm going to say, hey, I don't know you. No, I, I, I don't know her. I have no idea what that's about. No, no, we didn't. We, the liberals did that. We weren't there for that. We didn't... Uh, yeah. So basically, uh, he loves to point fingers, but when it comes to actually lifting a finger, do help us find out what went on. To actually, just basically political performance art question the leaders of these organizations for all of up to two hours. Ooh. 
Oh, no, no, no. He can't lift a finger to help Canadians with that, though. He's showing you who he is. Yep. He's showing you who he is. Uh, I am try- I'm trying to maintain the calm voice because at the same time as he's doing misinformation but won't question the people who benefited from something bad that he did, Ed is also trying to destroy our national security apparatus. It's enough to make a beaver climb the curtains. <laughs> Just, uh, but <clears throat> I am trying to remain poised and professional. <laughs> but I'm, yeah, this is, I, again, I have a respect for spin. I have a problem with outright bald face lying and making shit up. Yeah. I just, I cannot respect that game, man. I just cannot. I cannot whatsoever. Speaking of people who bald face lie, Doug Ford. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where do we begin with this guy? Oh, my word. Well, we can start with, I think, Bill 124. Because um, he had a decision come down from the Ontario Appeals Court. I'm just looking for it here. Sorry. Um, okay. And it uh, basically the Ontario Appeals Court finally did rule that Bill 124, which capped salary increases for public sector workers to 1% a year for three years. Yeah. What? When, when cost of inflation was at what, 7% at one point? Yes was unconstitutional, which isn't a surprise because Kathleen Wynne's government tried something similar mm -hmm. when they were in power. Yeah. And they were told it was unconstitutional. And then they had to end up paying people a lot of money. And they're going to have to do it again. They're going to have to do it again. So the Court of Appeal of Ontario found that the law violated the collective bargaining rights of the public sector workers, which includes nurses and teachers. On Monday, the government, Doug Ford said, it would not take the legal fight further. Wow. He's admitted Quote. defeat. Yes. The government of Ontario will not appeal today's court appeal the decision and will instead take steps to repeal Bill 124 in its entirety in the coming weeks, the Minister of the Attorney General wrote in a statement. Unions hailed the ruling as a big victory for workers' rights and had urged Ford to listen to the court. This is from uh, CTV News, by the way, wow. that I'm reading this. The Progressive Conservatives enacted the law in 2019 as a way to help the government eliminate the deficit. A lower court struck it down as unconstitutional, and the appeal court in a 2-1 decision largely upheld that decision, writing that the infringement couldn't be justified. Quote, because of the act, organized public sector workers, many of whom are women, racialized and or low-income earners, have lost the ability to negotiate for better compensation or even better work conditions that do not have a monetary value, the court wrote in its majority opinion. The province argued the law did not infringe constitutional rights, saying the charter only protects the process of bargaining, not the outcome. You still didn't allow the process to happen. You just said you're getting 1% a year and that's it. Shut up, go home, take it, be grateful. Mm -hmm. That's not bargaining. Ontario has not been able to explain why wage restraint could not have been achieved through good faith bargaining, the court wrote. In the absence of any evidence for the need for expediency or that the same goal cannot be achieved through collective bargaining, it is hard to understand on what basis the act's salutary effects outweigh its beneficial effects. Ooh. <laughs> the province said late Monday that it would introduce regulations urgently to exempt non-unionized and non-associated workers from Bill 124 until it is repealed, quote, to solve for the inequality of workers created by today's court decision. There was a dissenting opinion. Justice C. William Horgan wrote that the evidence showed very real economic reasons for imposing wage restraint and that the government did so instead of cutting services or jobs. Quote, according to the application, judge's analysis, it would be permissible for the government to temporarily reduce wage costs when the economy was on the brink of collapse, but it would be unconstitutional for the government to act proactively to prevent the inevitable, he wrote. If a government sees an economic cliff on the horizon, court should not require it to wait until the last moment to act. Um, so, 
that judge is saying that, you know, if the government says that there's an economic crisis, or, but the government is sitting on billions in surpluses mm -hmm. at the moment. So, yeah. Even if you assumed that test, you couldn't really apply it in this situation here. Well, I'm not surprised, but I, I'm just kind of shocked that he, he's not going to uh, appeal. Hasn't he appealed no. this already? This is the second or third time or yes something? yeah yes well this is this was in the appeal court so yes right. so yes he, he has lost um well and, and consider that it's already cost us how much money to fight because the the government's lawyers we pay for and the, the prosecuting lawyers we pay for so somebody's making money on all this and it sure as hell is not the ontario taxpayer exactly so, just to, but hey, you know what? This is what I keep on saying about Doug Ford is that he has that ability to pull back rather than doubling down. I mean, he does double down. Mm -hmm. There are times oh, yeah. he does double down. But there are times where he realizes it's like, yeah, you know what? This is really not working out for me, so I'm going to cut bait on this one. And he's, look... He has a survival instinct. Yes. I was, I was about to say something along those lines. I do not like the man at all. I don't. I don't think he's very smart. I think he's a puppet of wealthy developers. I think we've all seen that that's basically the case. However, he knows when he's lost. He's smart enough to recognize this is a losing battle. I'm going to walk away from it. So I will give him that respect. He, he's realized, okay, that's it. The game is over. I've lost. Shake hands, move on. Let's try another game the next day. I, I got to give him that respect because unlike some other politicians, we'll just continue to fight and fight and fight a losing battle that's costing us money. He does recognize when he's lost. So yep. I got to respect that. I mean, again... He'll go back to the table three or four times before he finally admits defeat. But at least he's willing to do it. And he's probably looking at another way to try to screw them over. Of course. Of course he is. <laughs> of, well, another I mean, pathway. Here, let's look at this. Ford underspent the health care budget by $1.25 to try to fool us into thinking we need privatization. Mm -hmm. Now, in February, a couple of days ago, February 9th, there was an article that said Ontario teachers awarded additional pay to compensate for Bill 124. So one of the first things that it cost us uh, was this. It says, uh, when the Elementary Teachers Federation of Ontario and the Ontario Secondary School Teachers Federation reached new contract deals with the provincial government, they left some issues to be decided by an arbitrator. The teachers and government agreed to an additional 0.75% in each of the first two years of their previous contract in order to compensate for lost wages under Bill 124, but the amount for the third year was left to arbitration. The arbitrator has awarded an additional 2.75% for the third year. Good. Yes. Amounts that are on top of the 1% raises each year that were part of the previous contract. So basically, they ended up getting 1.75, 1.75, and 3.75. Because the bill 24, 124 was to apply for three years. Mm -hmm. um, and that has basically, uh, so that has cost us money there. And then according to the um, FAO, which is the Financial Accountability Office of Ontario, the court's decision to decide what Ontario public sector workers could cost the Doug Ford government over 13 billion dollars that's 13 billion dollars of earned wages that he tried to screw ontarians out of mm -hmm. so you can maybe put it to another highway or funnel it to developers the cost of remedies affected be to workers Remedies to workers affected between 2022 and 2028 will total about $13.7 billion. Back in 2022, the FAO predicted the government would need to pay around $8 billion if the court challenge was successful. They had underestimated at that point. 
The province has also recorded a $2.5 billion contingent liability in 2022-2023 to recognize the potential of retroactive payments. I'm guessing that this might uh, have to do with pensions, pension contributions, if they didn't pay them enough on the salary. Which seems so. Then they have to cover that for the pensions as well. I got to grab. Don't quote me on that. Yes, but don't quote me on that one. That's just my assumption here on this. Uh, Let's see what else have I got here on this one. Yeah. And then on Monday, it seems that uh, Ontario Finance Minister Peter Bethvin Falvey projected Ontario will have a four point five billion dollar deficit by the end of this fiscal year which is $1.1 billion lower than what was initially projected. So that's uh, additional news from Ontario on, the, uh, on that uh, with regard to finances. And then in January of this year, because there were some initial rulings on Bill 124 that came in earlier than this one, this was the full ruling. But as a result of this, he was trying to cap salaries at 1%. Well, certain public servants were awarded a 6.5% pay hike in January as a result of the ruling. So Ontario public servants have won additional pay increases of 6.5%. The ladies in a series of retroactive pay decisions for workers affected by rage restraint law that was found unconstitutional. An arbitrator has awarded those members of the Ontario public service employees union, the extra pay in response to a reopener clause they had in the contract they signed in 2022, which at the time was subject to a law known as bill 124. That 2019 law capped salary increases for public sector workers to 1% a year for three years. Pardon me, my nose is itchy here. Um, That means you're going to kiss a fool. Done. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Uh, So while this case was being decided, in the meantime, arbitrators have awarded additional retroactive pay to several groups of workers that had reopener clauses, including teachers, nurses, other hospital workers, uh, orange air ambulance paramedics, and college faculty. That's a lot of people. Combined with the 1% year per year increase to public servants 2022 contract, the additional pay means they will receive salary increases of 3% in the first and third years of the deal and 3.5% in the second year. That too will total a lot of money. So I don't know how many billion when you add it all together. Mm. I'm not sure if that $13 billion number from the Financial Accountability of Ontario, uh, Financial Accountability Office of Ontario, includes all of these, or it's just $13.5 billion more as a result of the final decision. Um, 13.7, I should say, sorry. Uh, the articles weren't clear on that. But yeah, Kitlin Deb basically Dougie owes every single person in Ontario money. <laughs> and once again, kids, it costs a whole lot less to just do the right thing and be a good person the first time. That's a lot of money tried to screw people out of. Yeah. So, you know, when you hear conservatives saying, again, here, I'm fighting for the little guy and I believe in the value of hard work. No, he doesn't. No, they don't. No, he, it's a lie. No, they for don't. the people. No, for the wealthy people. That's for, it. Screw for the worst people. We're, we're serfs in this feudal kingdom. Mm. Oh, yeah. Then Kit Saucy. But the license plates. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, yeah. Let's... That's the other thing now, right? Ontario drivers won't need to renew their license plates anymore, Ford announces. Premier Doug Ford says drivers in Ontario will soon be able to skip the annual registration of their license plates as the province works to make this process automatic. He made the announcement at a news conference in Toronto. Quote, we are getting rid of that totally. Registering your vehicle, we did the first step getting rid of the stickers, now we're getting rid of the re-registration, the Premier said in response to a question about a surge in expired plates on Ontario roads. Oops, I made a mess. I need to clean it up. Let's pretend you just don't have to do that anymore. It will be automatically re-registered so people won't have to worry about that at all, he says. The Ministry of Transportation confirmed to CTV News Toronto that as of January 2024, there are 1 million plus expired plates in Ontario. Yeah, 1 million. Gee, 1 million. 1 million. That's, that was the effect of his first change. 
spokesperson for the ministry said the automatic renewal will only be available for drivers in good standing, meaning that individuals with parking tickets or toll bills will have to do it manually. Now, here's the thing. All those Service Ontario kiosks mm. that just got moved to those staples and those Walmarts. Right. Now have One of the major business. things that they do is okay. license renewals. Yeah. And now they no longer have that business. <sighs> yeah. So he took business away from people who had them. That he just gave the business to yes. other people. People that he made invest money in order to upgrade their premises oh, no, to be no, able no, no, to have no. the business there. Oh, the, the yes. original. Yes. The original yes. owners yes. Yes. took their businesses away from them, gave them to somebody else on sole source, no competition, gave them more money to renovate and yeah. than the than the, the move was going to save us in order to renovate this. And then a couple of weeks later removed one of the biggest drivers of business, which is licensed renewals. Yeah, there's, there's how many, I I think there's something, to correct me if I'm wrong, I think there's something in the neighborhood, neighborhood of about 14 million registered vehicles in the province. Like literally millions, almost as many vehicles as there are people. I, I could be wrong on that number, but I remember reading something and I had no idea that there was that many vehicles in the province. It's almost as, as many as there are people. It was shocking. I was like, wow. It's one of the things that, so, so in the province of Quebec, they haven't had stickers for, I don't, I can't remember the last time they had them. I think it was the seventies. You have to renew your plate each year. And your plate is part of an insurance program as well. So to renew your plate in, in Quebec, uh, Vim, you might be able to comment on this because you're in Montreal. Correct me if I'm wrong. To renew your plate in Quebec is hundreds of dollars, but it also pays into a provincial insurance program so that when you supplementary insurance, is, it's considerably less for your vehicle. It's actually a good program the way it's done. I can't remember what the fees were because it's been too many years since I've lived in Quebec. But yeah, there was a whole different kettle of fish there and i don't know why they didn't do something like that similar here maybe because the insurance companies own the provincial premiers you think maybe 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 i can only get a number for uh, registered uh, vehicles in canada 26.3 million yeah that's a lot when you consider there's 41 million of us yeah so but i can't get a number specifically from ontario here what I'm I read that just the other day and I, I, you know, it's one of those things you're busy and you just read it in passing and you forget to bookmark it or screenshot it. I'm going to yeah. start screenshotting a lot of things. <laughs> just like, yeah. so, but here's like, if I were one of those staples that just got this, I'd be like, what the hell, man? Mm -hmm. And it's like all the people that lost their service Ontario business even if they hadn't moved them to Staples, would have been surprised with this. Yeah. But whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa. Like that's, that's a large part of our business. 22% of our business, or, yeah. or so, I don't know what percentage of, but I mean. It's pretty big. It's pretty big. Cause I've, it's got to be pretty big. At any time I've gone to a service Ontario kiosk to renew my plates, uh, because you had to do it. If you didn't do it in it, like they'll send you, they used to send you a notification two months out. And if you didn't renew online, and for me, it was always a budgetary thing. I just don't have the money right now. I'll have to do it the day of, cause I'll have the money. Uh, you go line up and I always went to the one in, in Orleans because, um, uh, that was the least busy of all of them. I was in and out in about 30 minutes, but <clears throat> the, the bulk of the people lined up there were for renewing their plate or their driver's license. It was one or the other. So <laughs> that's a lot of money. Jeez, this is crazy. Um, in federal government news, this is good news. The federal government says that it is increasing student loan forgiveness for rural doctors and nurses by 50% in an effort to attract more medical professionals to smaller and underserved Canadian communities. The increase will see up to $60,000 in loan forgiveness offered to family physicians and family medicine residents. For nurses and nurse practitioners working in underserved rural and remote communities, the Liberals will be offering up to $30,000 in loan forgiveness. This increase is to the maximum amount of forgivable Canada student loans, meaning it applies only to the federal portion of the student loan. 
the measure touted Tuesday as an enactment of a previously announced funding from the 2022 federal budget. Over the next decade, this loan forgiveness will attract close to 1,200 more doctors and 4,000 more nurses, said Employment and Workforce Development Minister Randy Boissonneau. The federal government estimates that approximately 3,000 doctors and nurses are expected to benefit in the first year of implementation, reaching up to 8,000 medical professionals by the year 2033. According to government, the funding to cover the cost of this loan offering is coming from existing plan spending, specifically a years-old allocation of $26.2 million over four years, starting in 2023-2024, and $7 million ongoing. Interesting. Asked by reporters why the Liberals aren't instead expanding the number of residency spots, Minister Boissonneau pointed to the cross-Canada funding agreement the federal government has secured with provinces and territories. Quote, the money's there and the provinces and universities can allocate it and they should allocate it in these spaces. But at the same time, it's not just about more medical residencies and more medical spaces. It's about recognizing the medical professionals who are already here. Providing more student loan debt relief will encourage more young people to become doctors and nurses, to practice in underserved areas of our country or communities that have told us they have a hard time attracting new family doctors. So basically, the medical training portion was already included in that health transfer that multiple billion dollars thing that the provinces are tracking their heels on actually signing final agreements. But this is a positive move. And now again, over to you, premiers, because there's a provincial portion of these loans as well. Get on it. What are you going to do? On it. What are you going to do? Once again, the federal government is doing what it can on its portion to try and help solve the problem. I remember, no, you know what, I don't have the facts straight, so I'm not going to bring up the topic. I'll, I'll, try and, I'll try and source the info at some point, and I'll, I'll add it to the conversation, but I don't, I don't have it in front of me right now, and I can't draw it correctly from memory, so okay. I won't do that. And another thing that the federal government is doing to try and help a provincial mess is that uh, Housing Minister Sean Fraser, we love him. Yes, yes, we do. Yeah. Has announced that the existing program of uh, housing program is going to be tweaked to include universities, colleges, non nonprofits, and private developers eligible for low cost financing to build residences on and off campus. Because right now it was strictly for, uh, I guess, residential. Um, I, I would say, I mean, this is residential too, but I'm, it's strictly for a commercial residential, I guess. Mm. you would put it but this one uh, the bill uh, the pool of applicants will be expanded so that colleges and universities can apply to the fund as well to build campus housing which was not the case before so it's not going to cost uh, it's not going to add any additional money it's called the apartment construction loan program it was topped up with an additional 15 billion dollars in the fall bringing the total funding to 40 billion it does not add more money to that pool it, it just increases the number of organizations or bodies that can apply for the funding from the pool. But they have decided that some of that money can go to construction of residences on colleges and universities. So doing the little things right, making the little adjustments along the way to make sure that the program is as effective as possible. But again, over to you, premiers. now. Are you going to be putting some money into building residences on your campuses? <laughs> well, not the strip mall. Uh... <laughs> No, they won't. Like I said, just these are things that don't get a lot of press, and they should. They should, I guess. But this is uh, this is literally doing the little things right. Mm -hmm. In this case, uh, Mr. Grizzly, how are we doing for time? Uh, we're gonna have to wrap it up in a couple minutes. But I did want to uh, I did want to show you something from yesterday. Just. Uh... I don't know if you're aware of, of this moment that took place in the uh, housing yesterday. I probably not. So it was done for the specific purpose of creating a social media moment. And he was called out for it by the Speaker of the House. Oh. Because yes. he used an acronym that we commonly use. And... Uh, you're not supposed to do, it's unparliamentary language to begin with. And he called him out on it. He says, well, I'm just saying, you know, uh, WTF, where's the funds? Well, 
here's the other thing. If you notice what's written in his hashtag, arrive scam, which he also said in the House of Commons, which again is unparliamentary language because you yes. are not supposed to say or do things of that nature in the House of Commons. You're so not supposed was, to imply that your fellow colleagues are exactly. somehow dishonorable because you are all honorable. Yeah, so he said, WTF, and the speaker said, excuse me, you can't use that. And he said, where's the funds for a RIVE scam? So there's a double there. The WTF, it was all done for the specific purpose of creating a viral social media nanosecond. That's all it was. It all was what? staged. It was, it, it was all staged to just give a clip. Yeah. That was it. And we haven't had a chance to get into the ARRIVE uh, scan thing as well, but... Uh... Hopefully we'll get be able to touch on that on a future episode. We haven't forgotten. It's just no, no. a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot going on. <laughs> There's a lot, There's a lot so going on. Much. And only so much uh, broadcast time. I do want to show you one more thing here, though. Sure. Which, well, actually two things. Uh, first one is, remember, we've, we've spoken about Cheryl Gallant on this show a couple of times and how oh, she yeah. seems to be somebody who needs to seek mental health treatment. Because she says some outrageously outlandish things. And here's another example yeah. of it. This uh, Renfrew Nipissing Pembroke uh, Federal Liberal Riding Association, our local member of parliament reaches a new low accusing the Liberal Party of giving fentanyl to children. Shara Gallant, conservative, Renfrew Nipissing Pembroke, Ontario. We have seen these proud socialists engage in inflation denialism. We have seen them resort to balanced budget denialism. They have now reached a new Edmund denialism. The only thing they will not deny is giving fentanyl to children. <sighs> Lady, seek help. You, yes. you need help. They will say anything. That's just... They will say anything. <laughs> I don't even know what to say about that. Oh, man. Well, she went on a rant some months ago about how uh, they're, they're exposing children to pornography in libraries when drag queens read story time. Yeah, exactly. That, that's what I mean. They will say anything. 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 And it always has to do with children. Always. Because that, the that trans tugs at the gotta heartstrings. Got to protect right? the children from people in bathrooms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to protect them from drag queens because they're sexualizing. Got to protect them from teachers who are showing them pornographic materials. Got to do... Here's the thing, right? If conservatives consider Heather has two mommies mm -hmm. as being extreme pornographic material, the other prompts one or two questions. One, have you ever, 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 ever seen porn? Actual porn? Clearly. <laughs> Clearly they have not. One or two... What's on your web history? Oh, yeah. Because I would love um, to see trying to make Heather has two mommy seem like pornography just makes me wonder. It's like, um, yeah, what are you doing with that other hand that you have got me on speakerphone? Because that seems trying way too hard to portray yourself as pure. Mm -hmm. And when people do that, that always makes me wonder what's in your closet. Let's open the door and see how many skeletons fall out. So the last thing I want to show you is, uh, this is local, locally related, but nationally at the same time, because you know how Bell axed 4,800 people. Well, yep. Oh, yes. Yeah. Three of them. Uh, so my buddy, Stuntman Stu, we've been friends for 25 years, I think, something like that. Yep. We've known each other a long time. And I've met Angie a number of times uh, through mutual friends. I don't know Janelle at all, but uh, the number one morning show outside of, and I say outside of because CBC radio always has the number one show, period. It's never a question. So in commercial radio, the number one show, the number one morning show is um, Move, which used to be Magic 100. Mm -hmm. And now they got there, they're on the front page of the sun. Bell Media lays off popular the Move 100 morning show. Hosts stuntman Stu Schwartz, Angie Poirier, and Janelle Streeper. So I, I sent, a, I sent, you know, I sent a. Stu's a national treasure. He really is. He's a good man. Stu does a lot of good work in this city. And he's a good friend. I mean, I, we don't 
we're, we don't run in the same circles anymore. I mean, you know, our lives are different and he lives, he lives in uh, Farhaven. Okay. <laughs> and I live downtown. Uh, that's a joke. That's a joke because he's always saying Borleans because he lives in Barhaven. Anyway, I'm just, I was playing a little bit there, but brother, you're welcome to join us anytime you want. I sent him a link and sent him a message and said, look, anytime you want to come in, the, the door is open. You want to come in for a chat. You want to come in to hang out. You want to come in to do whatever you want to talk mental health. Cause I do it all the time. The, mm -hmm. the, the door is wide open for you. Oh yeah. I'd love to ask to come on. Oh yeah. Great guy. Um, one little, little tidbit you made me think of that since you were talking about tabloids. Mm -hmm. uh, proof that the, the Toronto Sun truly is a tabloid and a rag. They decided to run this story yesterday. All I did was clip a screenshot. I did not put a link to it. Because... Yes. Yeah. Could you read the title, please, Mr. Grizzly? <sighs> Trudeau's ex Sophie Gregoire seen dining with Nubo report. <sighs> literally none of our fucking business literally none she's not politically associated in any way now she's a private citizen leave her alone who she's dating doesn't matter this is literally a hey justin your former girl's now seeing someone better. This is who she's got that's better than you. Yeah, but, yeah, but according yeah, to yeah. Pierre Polyev, the media is all just a mouthpiece for Justin Trudeau. Yeah. And of course, again, the kids. The kids. They can read. They can read. Oh, drop down, babe. This is totally <laughs> not necessary. Literally none of our business. Come over here. Come over here. There you go. <laughs> Seven hard time getting in frame. Hello. Hello, for that box. Okay, this, we're going to floof this up. There we go. That's a little better. <laughs> How are you doing, morning. my dear? Good morning. <laughs> she can't hear you, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll just say it's lovely to see to, you. Can you hear now? I got the speakers on. Sure. It is lovely to see you. How are you doing, my dear? Lovely to see you. What's going on? Did I miss anything? Oh, you missed a lot. <laughs> Although I saw you popped in saying that you agree with Mr. Grizzly's view of Valentine's Day. Yeah, no, I, uh, um, I think there's, I really agree with what he said. Like there's so much pressure in a, in a hetero relationship. I don't know, I, but I can't speak oh. about other relationships about, you know. Yeah, there is. You've got to add the show, fabulous factor like, for us, right? So, yeah. Right? Well, I don't know. Sure. <laughs> and just like, you know, like I want 50 flamingos on my lawn and, you know, uh, box of chocolates and a, a massive 18 karat ring on my finger it's too much right so anyway so we had pizza and it was perfect it was like easy <sighs> yes colonnade yes. pizza mind you colonnade it was really good oh, what about you did? Did, what did you and alex do alex and i didn't do much actually because we're going to be doing it either tonight well it's, uh, it was going to be saturday but actually i got a note from uh one of the plays that I'm rehearsing for that they don't actually need me tonight. So I actually get a night off. So <laughs> I might be taking him out tonight uh, or, uh, or cooking something. He, he loves my cooking too. So sometimes, uh, you know, a nice meal with a little love sprinkled in. Oh, nice. But, uh, <laughs> but yesterday it was, uh, it was way past my bedtime massages. So okay, I don't he was know sore and it was like, that. I was like, I'm going to bed. I'm tired. This is, but I'm sore. I need a little rub. And it's like, Ugh. okay, no. I really should be sleeping, I, but I will rub you because I love you that much. We are. Yes. At miss. I, it should have been a heart shaped pizza, but it wasn't, it wasn't a, but it was really delicious. And I'm eating it for breakfast cold from the fridge. There's two <laughs> left. <laughs> yeah. No, it should just be, it's such a Hallmark holiday, but I also like, I'll tell you, like, I had the most beautiful thing about my day yesterday, other than the pizza, was that um, um, so many of my girlfriends, we they messaged us, or they messaged me, um, and just saying, like, happy Galentines, and the the friendships that I have with um, women in my life is really what I savored yesterday, I have to say. It was oh, incredible. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I'm so glad you had a wonderful day. Thank you. All right. Bye. Hi. Okay. So yeah, basically, I I have to ask uh, 
my sweetie what it is that he wants. There you go. Yes. Well, because it, it changes. Sometimes he wants to be taken out and sometimes he wants me to cook. So, mm -hmm. but if I'm going to be cooking, it's going to be like an all out. So just watch, a, watch the, watch the Twitter feed. Cause if you see some kids who cook, hashtag kids who cooks, uh, <laughs> stuff from the day you'll know what he's decided <laughs> Alrighty, let's wrap her up I gotta All right, get out here. that's the end of this episode of the daily beaver morning show we hope that you love listening to us because we loved making this for you remember sharing is caring so please tell your peeps and poops all about us and if you do not want to miss an episode well you do not have to thanks to the ray girl because she sponsored our pod page yes that qr code that you see under my chin if you scan that, brings you to our pod page, and that's where you can click subscribe. Or if you're listening, you go to podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver, lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. And that way, when we have something fresh off the bandwidth, it comes directly to you or gaily forward to you, whichever way, jauntily, it saunters, however it gets to you, but it will get to you. And if you'd like to support us in other ways, then make like Kit Elaine. Who says right there have a beyond awesome day everyone and remember to smash the button before you leave and you know what if you're not satisfied smashing with just one we've got three like share subscribe all of them love to be smashed with get a little delayed valentine's day action on and click our buttons baby mm. and if you'd like to help us in another way that squiggly right by mr grizzly's head brings you to our coffee page where you will find the eager beaver lodge emergency hydration fund Little donation there keeps us well stocked in our staff. Caesar, coffee, hot chocolate. All our friends. And of course, Guinness. Great lad, that guy. Yeah, he's a good lad. Irish fella. Good Irish lad. Yes. So, uh, yes. Help us keep our staff happy and us productive somewhat <laughs> by making a little contribution there. We really appreciate that. We I'm staff. Hear from you. Your staff. We love to hear from you. So if you'd like to write to us, true north eager beaver at gmail.com is our address. And if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts, please leave a review and some stars. Just a little, I'm not telling you how many, but if you happen to be watching, five is a nice number, but we leave that up to you. It's your decision. <laughs> it's all up to you. All right, because democracy is something that you do, please write your letters to your MPs, your MPPs, your senators. Handwritten letters are the best, and you don't even need a stamp. Let them know what's on your mind. Let them know that you support a national food program. Let them know that you support opening the armories to take care of people who are homeless so that they can at least stay warm. Let them know you actually, uh, that you're really not down with uh, allowing our national security to be Burger King, just belling up to the bar and saying, hey, mm -hmm. I would like to have this piece of information. Let them know you're not down with that. At the Scotch and Cigar Club last night, we actually, all of the guys, all of the conservative guys that were sitting on the porch were saying, I'll open up the armories. That's a brilliant idea. I'm like, well, you know, they're, they're staffed, they're heated, there's toilet, they're like all, they're like, that's a great idea. They're already there. We don't have to build anything new, although we should be building new, right? Yep. But there's a building right there. We can help people right now. These are progressive conservatives because they know getting people off the street and into housing saves us money, saves absolutely. all of society money. Absolutely. Absolutely. So do all of that good stuff because democracy is something that you do. From the Beaver Lodge, this is your eager beaver saying it could be a tough world out there. So please be kind to and gentle with yourself. And a very special note to our good friend, Mateo, who sent us a Valentine's Day greeting. Thank you, my friend. Cheers to you. Hell yeah. We got it. And yes, you can be our Valentine too. Big hugs to you. Oh. And Jordan's mom is on the O Show today. So if you have a chance to check out Laura Babcock's show later on, please do so. Uh, I'm going to leave you with this. This is my words of wisdom today. Yes. Uh, they're not actually mine. They're Barney, Barney Panofsky's best intention from My Name's Not Gordy. I'm going to put this on the screen and read it to you because it's really funny. I screwed up a bit on a client project and they want to discuss it with me today. And when they say you screwed up, I'm just going to yell, but the carbon tax and leave the meeting without taking questions. <laughs> I think that's brilliant. Ah, that's wonderful. <laughs> All right. Mr. Grizzly, please roll them credits. 
You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss v Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster. Hot pepper sauces made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph Something for our opening and closing sequence music. And uh, just a little note, if in case you haven't heard it, but uh, the Scotties is happening uh, this weekend. It starts this weekend. It's the National Women's Curling Championship. And uh, there's some big news. Jennifer Jones, Skip Jennifer Jones, has announced uh, that after 18 appearances at the Scotties, and trust me, it's hard to get there just once, Mm. 18 appearances at the Scotties, she is going to retire after this year. Uh, she is uh, the skip of the Canadian team at the 2014 Sochi Games as well, uh, who went through the games undefeated that's and brought back good. gold for us. Yeah, that's pretty undefeated. Uh, that's a pretty good record. <laughs> that's a pretty good record there. So, uh, you know, uh, hats off to Jennifer Jones on a very illustrious career. But uh, hey, maybe there's one more Scottish Championship. Maybe one more. Remains to be seen. All right. Have a good day, kids. I'll see ya.